All right, so what I want to tell you guys first is essentially how this image was created. Um, here's a before, and here's the final image. Let it run through. Now, essentially, um, this was done with, uh, as usual, a series of layer masks and uh, layer modes. But this time, we employed a couple of different filters and a couple of different things to create the lightning. Um, so again, here's here's our before and then our after. Now what I want to show you guys is the different layers. There's quite a few layers in creating this. Um, to kind of break it down for you a little bit, there's a series of layers that lighten up the eyes there, and then there's a layer that darkens the eye, lightens the eye, and then there's a highlight layer that pretty much does nothing but highlights all the areas that need to be highlighted as a result of the, the big bright lightning right here. Um, and then there's also a layer here that darkens the outer area of the eye. Um, this layer here creates um, some dark shadows around her eyes to kind of exaggerate those eyes a little more. As you can see, a lot of this is just focused very on very, very small details. Um, right here, this is a pretty big layer. Though. This layer actually darkens key parts of the image. Essentially, um, everything except for the same areas that I was highlighting in this layer right here. So I combined this layer and this layer together to create the darker image. And here is an, another overlay layer. This is what gives everything that bluish tint color. This layer here reduces the amount of color so that combined with that creates the resulting image that we want. And then we've got a series of five layer groups and each layer group creates a different element in the lightning itself. <clears throat> you know, first off, you've got a layer group containing the the lightning ball, and then a, a couple of lightning bolts. Um, the lightning bolts were in fact made from scratch, and in this tutorial, in a little bit, I'll show you exactly how that was done. You know, and then these other groups are just more lightning bolts, and then this is the last lightning bolt, and now we're back to our original. So. You kind of want to see it build back up. We'll go ahead and show everything again. Darken, color, darken. And then your eye details start to come out. And that's it. So, uh, first up, we'll go ahead and start over and show you how we made the lightning bolts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to leave this image open because I'm going to be referencing it as I go through so that I make sure I um, get my settings and get all my colors and everything that I had originally done as close as possible so that you guys can, you know, get the most effective um, result. Because, you know, obviously I, I did this before I recorded the tutorial. But what, I, what you want to do first is you want to find the image online that you're going to use. Um, I use this image here. I'm going to link it below. Um, this was just found on DeviantArt. And all I do is I just right click on the download image link over here on the right side and click copy link location. And then go back to GIMP and click file open location and paste and then click open and it will go ahead and download that uh, that image and it will open it up as its own image so there it goes and opening and there we go so just like that we have the full size version of this image which is nice it's it's a good 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 image to work with so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the streak of lightning that goes up her arm. Now, um, a little precautionary note, the lightning bolt that's on this one is not going to be, like the lightning in general on this is probably going to look a little bit different than the lightning I get on this one. And that's just because the lightning is kind of generated at random. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So if you right click and you click, first we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer set it to transparency and click OK. And click on the blend tool and set it to foreground to background. 
switch over so that your foreground color is white and your background color is black and then drag a gradient all the way across the width of our image and <laughs> make sure your settings are right so that your opacity actually does what it's supposed to do and let's try that again there we go so you should end up with something like this now just click filters render clouds difference clouds and it's going to pull up this setting here and you're just going to set the detail all the way up to 15 and click OK and it's going to run through and load I'm going to pause until it's done okay so there we go and you can already kind of see the lightning is this black area just so you know so if we click colors invert what you're going to see is this white is going to be our lightning but we have to pull it out a little bit better than that so all we have to do is click colors levels and then adjust our levels as we see fit um, if you don't know much about the color modification tools in GIMP um, there's going to be a link below and uh, that lesson kind of goes over some of these different tools just for your information but as you can see we're just kind of adjusting the levels until we kind of get this this relatively thin streak of lightning and I'm probably gonna actually go with this path kind of see how where my mouse is going and then I don't know what I'm gonna do down here I'll probably go up this way and back down okay so we'll click OK and then we're going to right click on this layer and click add layer mask and set it to grayscale copy of layer and click add and what's going to happen is it's going to turn our image into our layer mask so that we have some good transparency now that we have a layer mask on here we don't need this image to look like that so we're going to actually replace it with the color of our lightning which is blue so just select all click on this and then fill it in with blue and now we have the blue lightning effect now of course whenever you are actually looking at lightning it doesn't look blue it actually looks white with blue edges around it so we're going to emulate that in a little bit but for now first we need to fix our lightning um, so that it's actually just a single streak like what we want so what we're going to do is we're going to get our paintbrush tool out hit the D key to set our colors back to black and white click on our layer mask set the layer set our color to black and just kind of fill in this extra stuff sometimes it helps if you right click and you click show layer mask so that you're actually looking at the mask instead of the result of the mask so again I'm going to probably go with this pathway so I'm gonna try to try to get rid of as much of this extra stuff as I can probably just gonna switch over let's switch over to a softer brush maybe this one and just kinda get rid of some of this right in here uh, yeah we'll cut across that way you don't want to get rid of all of this this smoky stuff because it will actually create the effect that we want and then we'll leave we'll cut that off and maybe soften that a little bit zoom out okay getting getting better that looks pretty good let's get rid of this you don't want those floaters they look kinda weird in the image just kinda get rid of that a little bit now if you right click and you uncheck show layer mask you'll now see that you have a relatively cohesive bolt except for this weird streak here so let's go back and check show layer mask and kinda get rid of that area I mean you don't have to do that I just kinda like having a single bolt I'm not big on the whole spreading out lightning bit I think it looks better for this specific use like this alright so right click on your layer click show layer mask again and there now we kind of have some semblance of a single bolt it kind of zigzags through pretty wickedly here and what we'll do is whenever we actually we're gonna actually take this and stretch it and put it on her arm here all the way up it and then we'll probably change our layer mask a little bit to make it look like it goes behind the arm and back in front of the arm so it doesn't look like it's just tacked in front of her arm because that's it's just little things like that that makes these images look really really fake so let's get rid of a little bit of that extra smoke okay so I'm pretty happy with that so let's go ahead and um, 
work with that. So I'm going to pause the video real quick and uh, fit, add a layer group because my recording software won't let me do it while it plays. Okay, so now that I have a layer group in place, um, we're going to go ahead and position this bolt so that it, it's actually on this arm going up it. Um, we'll actually make it look more realistic with the white in the middle after we position it because there's no point in doing this and then positioning it and then because then you're gonna have to delete the layer and re-add it later anyway so to do that all we have to do is first off rotate this bolt so that it's actually heading in the right direction so click on the rotate tool oh first click select none because you don't want to have a selection click on the rotate and actually physically rotate the layer group instead of just the layer that way you actually get a better preview and I'm going to hide the layer group that way I can see just my result not the original and just kind of try to get the the general direction of the rotation to, to match the direction of the arm and that looks pretty good if you look at this line right here you can see it's pretty well down the center of the arm all the way through so that's that's pretty good so just click rotate and once it's done rotating go ahead and turn the layer back on so you can actually see it and then click on come on there we go click on the move tool and just kind of move it over just a little bit and now we're going to have to actually add some perspective distortion to this lightning bolt so it doesn't look so flat we want it to kind of be on the same plane that this arms on so to do that we're going to use the perspective tool so click on your perspective tool, click on your layer group, and then click on the actual image and the perspective tool will activate. And then again just hide your layer group and we're going to just kind of pull on the four corners of this image and try to match the plane that we're creating with this perspective tool to the arm. So just kind of move the corners around kind of like that maybe maybe like maybe like that maybe like that <clears throat> let's pull this down a little bit because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take this lightning bolt and have it go down and then go behind the arm come back go around in front of the, maybe we might have that go behind the arm and then have this go up and around the thumb that looks that sounds good so once you're happy with your transformation click transform once you're happy with the result or once it's done just go ahead and turn the layer on and now that our bolts in place we're going to actually start hiding or masking off some of the areas that we don't want to be visible like this area here shouldn't exist because it's going to technically be behind the arm so we'll get started on that next okay in order to remove this area here all we have to do is edit our existing layer mask with the paintbrush tool so hit the D key to make sure your white and black colors are set to the default and uh, click on your paintbrush tool and use a soft brush and the reason why we're using a soft brush is because if you look at the arm the hand itself and much of the arm it's actually out of focus if you look at the image itself the camera focused on the body here it didn't focus on the arm which is extended up toward the lens and actually I looked at the settings on the camera for this image and they use a relatively um, large aperture so as a result of that the the depth of field was pretty small so the hand and all this stuff is pretty out of focus but it's not a big deal it's just we have to make sure that we compensate for that by using a softer brush so just go ahead and start removing this area here there we go <clears throat> and do the same thing down here zoom out I actually kind of overdid it on there so I'm going to undo and try that again and the trick is short brush strokes sometimes I forget to do that myself because if you use long brush strokes you're going to catch yourself in this situation where you got to undo a lot instead of just a little bit there we go that looks pretty good 
So now it looks like it's going behind the arm and coming up or out. Now it looks like it's going back down, zigzagging, and then we're going to have it go back and forth. So we need to get rid of this area here, right? Because it's going to go down, up, yeah. And then it's going to come out right there. Let's so make your brush small. Carefully remove some of that. Zoom out. And you can see that it's. Let's show the layer mask so we can see a little clearer. Yeah. So it's going down, up, through, behind the arm, out of the arm. Okay. So that does work. And we got a little chunks want to get rid of those. Okay, so now the only thing that's weird is it's kind of going over the thumb and it should probably go underneath of the thumb or, or behind the thumb for that matter. So let's go ahead and find the thumb. It's pretty out of focus because it's actually the closest feature to you out of everything. So that looks good. And then just kind of soften up this edge right here because that was the edge of the canvas so we don't want that. So with a soft brush just kind of do that. And there we go. So now we're going to go ahead and actually make this look like lightning. So to make the uh, lightning look more realistic, we actually need to add the white in the center, you know, because real lightning actually looks white with a blue edge. So to do that, all we have to do is right click on our current lightning layer and click duplicate layer because what we're doing is we're essentially just keeping the layer mask and then just replacing this blue color with the color white. So I'll click select all, click on the bucket tool, uh, switch over to the color white and make sure you are set to fill whole selection and fill it in. And what it's going to do is it's going to create the white and then the gray areas is going to show the blue edge through. And believe it or not, that's all it takes. Um, but look here, there's a little problem here. And in order to fix that, we have to now change both layer masks, which is kind of a nuisance. And that's also why I wanted to make sure that you, you make your tweaks before you actually reach the point where you need to do things like that, because it's just, it's just inconvenient. Um, in fact, if you're going to do any major changes, I recommend just deleting the layer, changing the layer mask, duplicating it, and redoing that whole process again. It's just easier than trying to edit both masks exactly the same. Okay, so there's the first lightning bolt. Now what we're going to start working on is the rest of the lightning bolts that were actually shooting out of her fingers. If you look over on the original one, you'll see, let me actually turn on all these layers again. And if you look at the original one, you'll see that the uh, her fingers had a couple of lightning bolts shooting out of them. And making those is, uses a relatively, or quite a similar process really, but um, I'm going to teach you how to kind of control the direction of the lightning bolt. You know, our first bolt was pretty much on its own. It, it just kind of made itself randomly and we just kind of worked with it. Um, but these smaller ones, they need to be much more focused and directed. You know, this one, I told it to curve. I showed it where to go. Same with these ones. I told them to curve. And then this one and this one. So next up, I'm going to show you how I did that. OK, I went ahead and added another layer group in here because, again, my recording software won't let me move layers around and what have you. So um, something else I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of start organizing these layers by renaming them. So. To rename a layer, just hit F2 on your keyboard and then just type in what you want to name it. I'm going to name this one Arm Lightning. And hit enter and it will commit it. And then this one I'm going to name Middle Finger Finter? Finger <laughs> Lightning. Man, I can't type. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually just create a relatively small layer. 
you know, somewhere like this with just a really, really small bounding box so that it's a lot easier to manage. Um, and in order to figure out how big our layer needs to be, I'm just going to click on my rectangle select tool and create a rectangle and just make it about the size of the hand and just think about where that lightning bolt's going to go. It's going to go down here right about where the center of your hand is and uh, your palm and essentially go right into the sphere on the final image. So it kind of goes out into the sphere. So we're just kind of visualizing that and making a rectangle that essentially fits in that as closely as possible. And that rectangle is if you click and hold and start dragging you'll notice down here it'll actually show you the size of your box. So 656 by 1104 seems to be about right. So hit Control Shift A to deselect all, right click and click new layer, make the width 656 and make the make the width number lock. There we go. Make the height 1104, leave it on transparency and click OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a layer that is just the size of the hand or the selection that we had created before. Alright, so now that we have a layer in place, we're going to go ahead and create our layer, or create our lightning bolt. And this process is essentially the same. The only difference is, is we're going to create a much smaller line for our gradient. See, this, this color change right here is what actually makes the lightning bolt. And the lightning bolt stays within the bounds of the color transformation, which is exactly what we want. So you're just going to kind of click and then release and kind of create a gradient that fits fairly close to that and is, is directed in the same way that you want it to go. If you can't quite get it right, just keep keep messing with it until you figure it out. That looks pretty close. We can move that and work with it. And now all we have to do is click filters and just click repeat difference clouds and it will just redo that same effect again and this time you'll notice the lightning bolt is much more straight than it was before so again just click colors invert then colors levels and adjust your levels until most of the black in the background is gone or white in the background is gone and you have nothing but your lightning bolt and then just click OK then right click add layer mask grayscale copy of layer and click add just like before and then Again, we're just going to fill this in with that same color blue that we had used before. Make sure you set to fill whole selection and fill it in. And just like that, we have our lightning bolt made. We just need to move it around and finalize how it how it looks, I guess. So we want it to come out of the tip of her finger, shooting down that's pretty close and let's go ahead and rotate a little bit so click on the rotate tool and then we're going to actually rotate from the end of the lightning bolt at the top we're just going to rotate it out just a little bit and then click rotate and that'll move it over and now our bolt pretty well is going in the direction that we want it to so we're just going to finish this up by tweaking the lightning bolt you know get rid of some of this extra crap that we don't want show your layer mask just kind of brush away with the brush tool get rid of some of those unwanted details and then look here see this this hard edge is gonna create a really fake look so click on make your soft brush a little bit bigger and just kinda soften that away and then just do the same thing on the bottom and there's a relatively good chance that whenever we put the ball in here that we're going to probably cut this lightning bolt in half. But since we don't know how much we're going to cut it yet, we're going to leave it long so that we don't have to redo it later. So just right click and uncheck the show layer mask option. And now we kind of masked off a little bit too much. So we're just going to move this back a little bit and there we go. So now just right click on the layer, click duplicate layer and we're just going to fill in this area with the color white again to create our bolt and we're just essentially going to repeat that process on the index finger ring finger and pinky finger well I didn't actually do it on the ring finger or the pinky finger with the other one you could I don't think I'm going to for this tutorial I'm just going to do another one for the 
the index finger, and then the ring finger, or I'm sorry, the, the thumb. <laughs> So to create the index finger lightning, I'm going to just right click on my middle finger lightning layer group and click duplicate layer. And I'm not actually going to use these layers inside, I just um, simply did that because I can't do it because I can't do it otherwise because of my recording software. And also I wanted, more importantly, I wanted to keep this layer bounding box size the same and I didn't want to have to try to remember and type in those numbers again. So. I'm going to keep this blue layer here. I'm going to del I deleted the white one and I'm keeping the blue layer. So right click on the layer mask and click delete layer mask and then select all on our image and hit the delete key on your keyboard to remove all of those pixels. So now all we're left with is a layer that is the same exact size as our other layer. And we're just going to rename our layer group to index finger lightning copy not copy, get rid of the word copy. There we go. And just essentially repeat that process. Click on the blend tool and try to click on each end of the finger and just try to create a gradient and try to, you know, the wider you make this, the more wild that gradient's gonna be. So let's try, uh, I'm sorry, the wider you make that gradient, the more wild the lightning bolt's gonna be. There we go. I like that one. I think that's going to create a good, a good bolt. <laughs> yeah, it sounded so dorky. Okay, so click filters, repeat difference clouds. It'll go through and repeat that process, and you can see it's just a little more off than the other one. And then click um, colors invert, colors levels, and would you, well, what do you know? If you click on presets and then you click on the top one on the list, it's going to actually reuse the settings that you used last time. In this case, it's the settings that we did for the, the middle finger bolt. And since it's pretty much going to end up being the same settings, it's at least a good starting point. You can at least pull it back and forth to see if, you know, maybe some slight adjustments need to be made. But um, it's definitely a quick way to, you know, get that levels setting set and then right click on your layer and click add layer mask set it to grayscale copy of layer click add click on your actual layer hit select all click on your bucket fill tool fill it in with the color blue and there's your next bolt and for now I'm going to hide the middle finger lightning so that all I have to see is the index finger so right click click show layer mask and Matt, get rid of this information with your paintbrush tool and the color black and just brush away that extra junk. Zoom out, right click on your layer, uncheck show layer mask, and there we go. We just need to actually position the uh, layer a little better. So move it up a little bit, and then reshow our middle finger. And you can kind of see the intersections pretty much where that orb is gonna be, that lightning ball. So that's perfect. Just click on our paintbrush, Go to our layer mask and just kind of get rid of that extra, extra stuff beyond the edge of the finger. And then get rid of that hard edge right there. Okay, and then just right click, click duplicate layer. And fill the duplicated layer in with the color white. And just like that, we now have two bolts of lightning with a random floating blue piece at the top. So let's get rid of that. There we go. So now you should have an index finger light layer group, a middle finger layer group, and an arm layer group. And then of course the base layer. So next up we're going to do the thumb. The thumb uses a slightly different process um, to kind of make it go in an arc instead of straight. All right, so let's just right click on our index finger lightning and click duplicate layer. And again, this is for the same purpose as what it was before. We're just trying to keep this bounding box the same size. So just delete one of those layers and then delete the layer mask. And then select all, click the delete key. So now all we have is the layer size bounding box. Now this time, let's rename this to thumb light. Ning. Get rid of the word copy and hit enter. Okay. Now this time we're going to make the arc, 
or the lightning actually arc in a curve. Now if you recall, the thing that actually makes the lightning is the whenever you do the difference cloud feature or feature filter, the gray area here is what the lightning kind of bounces in. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create that same tube, but instead of a straight motion, we're going to create it on a, a uh, circular type motion. And to do that, all we have to do is change the way our radial, or I'm sorry, our gradient actually goes. We can make it go in a radial, and then if we do that, what you'll see happen is, let's go ahead and just show you really fast. It creates a circle. <laughs> actually, this time it made a heart. It's kind of funny, but it'll arc. That's the point. So if we start right here, and we just kind of create that radius, that radial blur, it'll it'll do that for us. Now this time it's a little bit tricky because you got to click on the center and go out, and you're ultimately defining the radius with which you want, you know, the um, the lightning to travel. So you want to kind of almost do what you did before, where you're going on both sides of the finger, but you're going to kind of click further up because you want it to kind of arc up like that. So it's a little tricky to really get it right. See, that might work. Let's try that. So repeat difference clouds. As you can see, it really created a pretty wicked arc there. And if we decrease our transparency, you can kind of see that's actually probably going to do OK but I don't really like the result so let's undo and then click reshow difference clouds and just click new seed and click OK and what will happen is it will create a different shape and then that one is actually pretty wicked too um, we can probably have it go like that but I don't think I like that one either so let's try changing the gradient a little bit maybe we make it a little bit smaller now click filters, repeat difference clouds, and as you can see that one didn't work out very well because it kind of went out of our bounding box. You know what, let's actually right click on this and click layer to image size because that bounding box is actually hindering us more than helping us this time. So now our bounding box is the same size as our actual image itself which will allow us to create bigger gradients and coincidentally bigger um, lightning bolts, bigger arcs that is. There we go. So that one created a pretty good arc. I, I like that one. We'll go ahead and go with that. Now also note that another benefit of cr keeping the actual layer size smaller means GIMP has to process less and it keeps the program running a little bit quicker so you don't have to wait so long as it generates all of this unnecessary information. So click colors, invert, and colors levels and then just click on the preset and then click OK. Okay so now we just need to get rid of all of this unnecessary stuff so just start coloring and you can you know every other time so far I actually created the layer mask first and then did this on the layer mask but the order doesn't matter you can do this before you create the layer mask and it'll give you the same result zoom in, get rid of that little bit of extra junk there, zoom out, right click, click add layer mask, grayscale copy a layer, and click add. And what it will do is it will create that, that arced radius. So now let's select all on our layer, click on our bucket fill tool, set our color to blue, and fill it in. <coughs> Now if we just click on our layer group, we should be able to just move it in place. Maybe and that looks pretty good. So now it's going to arc. Maybe we even make it go a little lower. Let's try that. And you know, you can always go back and tweak this later if you don't like it. And now we just need to get rid of the top half of the ring because we don't need any of this. We just need the bottom. Oh yeah, make sure your layer mask is set to black and white. Right click on it and click show layer mask. And we'll just start getting rid of some of this. And I stand corrected, we actually need to see where the thumb is. So maybe something like that. Zoom in, fine tune that a little bit. 
And you know what? Our lightning bolt still isn't... Well, let's see how it looks. If we duplicate the layer, and we fill the duplicator layer in with white, that looks okay, but I think... I don't think it's as sharp as I'd like it to be. So let's click Show Layer Mask, and let's get rid of some of this extra stuff. And then click Colors Level, or yeah, Colors Levels again, and let's let's pull that out a little further. Yeah, that looks better. Right click, Uncheck Show Layer Mask. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And then just kind of get rid of some of this extra stuff here, like that. That looks pretty good. So right click and click duplicate layer. Select all, fill the duplicated color in, layer in with the color white with your bucket fill tool. Um, just so you know, what I was doing there, I hit control A for select all, shift B for the bucket tool, and then clicked. And there we go. So now we have our all of our lightning pretty well created. Um, Next up, we're going to create the, the lightning ball that's going to go right here, and we're going to also create a couple of random lightning bolts that are kind of coming out of it. If you look in the final image, you can see what I'm talking about. There's this little bolt here, this streak here, and then this the ball itself right here. So the first thing we want to do to create our lightning ball is create another layer group. So we're just going to right click and click new layer group oops let's, let's right click down here and click new layer group and then move that up to the top and name it lightning ball and then right click and add a new layer and we'll just actually let's right click and click new layer group because the lightning ball layer group is actually going to contain the if you look over here again it actually contains a set of layer groups. It contains one for the actual ball, one for one of the lightning streaks, and another for the other lightning streak. So that's all in one group. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. So we've got a lightning ball layer group, and then this is just going to be called um, ball, and then right click and click new layer set it to transparency and click OK and what we're going to do is we're going to create the ball shape in order to do that we're going to use the ellipse select tool and just start drawing a circle and then come down here and check the fixed aspect ratio checkbox and set it to one to one this is your tool options dockable dialog. I have mine set over here. Um, a lot of people set it over here. By default, it's over here on the left side. But anyway, so once you set it to fixed on a one to one ratio, it'll make a perfect circle. So just kind of drag it around and just get it in the spot that you want it to be on in, for that matter. And just for reference, let me check. So yeah, that's that's just about where I had my other one. And then hit enter to commit that selection. Now just click on the hit shift B for the bucket fill tool and we're just going to have that ready. Um, for now we're going to actually first right click on our layer and click add layer mask and set it to selection and click add. And what that will do is that will actually turn our layer mask into whatever our selection was. So let's uncheck show layer mask. And now, if we actually fill this in with that color blue that we've been using all along, this whole layer, by hitting select all and filling it in, the only part that actually fills in is the part that isn't masked. And then, you could have, one way you could have done this was with the, the select tool, and then clicking um, feather selection, and creating a feather. But I don't like to do that because it doesn't give me quite as much control, and it's harder to preview. So instead, I actually just create a layer mask and then click filters blur Gaussian blur and it'll essentially feather it the same way so you're just gonna feather and again you're you're blurring your layer mask to create that that soft edge it has just kind of blur it until you get something that looks pretty good um, I like that so let's click OK and what will happen is, is it'll essentially blur the edges just like that 
<clears throat> and then all we have to do is right click and click duplicate layer fill in the duplicated layer with the color white and there we go so there's the original one and there's the new one as you can see this one's balls a little bit bigger that's okay we can work with that so next up we're going to create the first lightning arc shape which we're going to actually just use the same process what we did before um, but you know I, I really I really just don't like how big this ball shape is so first I'm gonna actually make it a little bit smaller by clicking on the scale tool and clicking make sure I'm on the group not just the individual layer and I'm just gonna kinda scale it down a little bit just to make it a little bit I don't know better cuz you know the, like the entire arc was missing for the thumb because it was just so big so let's let's try let's try that instead so you click the scale tool let it work its magic and Gimp's thinking and there we go so now just move that over a little bit maybe like right there yeah I like that okay so now let's create our first lightning arc shape. Um, to do that, we're going to right click and click, or right click on our lightning ball group and click new group. And we're going to name this um, arc one. And we're just going to repeat the process that we did before of clicking on the gradient, setting it to radial right click and click new layer set it to transparency and click OK and we're just gonna try to create a gradient from down here somewhere probably and radius it upward so that it it creates it, it's gotta be a pretty small radius really because it's gotta kinda go up and back you know so if I click overlay that'll kinda give me a well no it won't if I click if I just turn the opacity down that'll work too yeah, see that'll probably work. It'll probably give me some kind of little circle right here. Let's try that out and see what it does. So turn your opacity back up. Click filters, uh, render clouds, difference clouds. Make sure it's at 15. I'm gonna put that back down to zero just for no reason. <laughs> Let it render. And now that it's rendered, we've got ourselves a lightning ball. Whoops. But as you can see, it's a little bit it's almost too perfect. Let's see what it looks like if we actually make the adjustments. I, I guess it's not too bad. I mean, you'd still get the picture, I would think. We'll see though. If, if it doesn't look very good, we'll, we'll tweak it. Um, so right click, add layer mask, set it to grayscale copy of layer, click add, and then select all, bucket fill tool, fill it with the color blue and we're gonna actually click on the layer mask and we're just gonna mask off this extra stuff because we want it to appear to start behind it and come up to the front so now duplicate the layer fill in the duplicated layer with the color white and yeah that looks way too perfect so let's delete those and uh, try again. Alright, so I ended up deciding that I didn't like how big the lightning ball was, so I just did it again and made it a little bit smaller. Um, so, just so you know. So let's go ahead and create a new layer group, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the, uh, the, the bolt that just kind of arcs up and arcs back down into this, this uh, ball. So we're going to rename this layer to lightning one and then add a new layer to that layer group just set it to transparency and click OK and we're gonna do a similar method to what we did with this first arc here um, we're just gonna click on the gradient tool set it to radial and then click and drag kinda like that 
but the problem is, is I'm going to set this group to multiply so that you can kind of see what's going on. Um, actually, I didn't do what I expected it because it's in a layer group. But anyway, what's going to happen is it's going to kind of arc out and back, not quite like we want it to. So we're going to try to make it a little more interesting by using the scale tool. And we're just going to kind of squish this this radius a little bit, kind of like that, just to kind of make it peak up higher and go back down. We'll scale it. All right, now that it's scaled, we'll just go ahead and click filters, clouds, or render clouds, difference clouds. Set the de make sure the details on 15 and click OK. And see how this does. Okay, so it created a pretty interesting shape on the bottom, not so much on the top, but th there's just enough variation on the bottom for it to be worth using. So we're going to go ahead and click on the flip tool over here and click vertical and just click. And then it'll actually flip our arc upside down so we've got the interesting side on the top, which is where we're going to ultimately put this bolt. So just click colors, invert, and then colors levels, and then adjust your levels until you get a nice thin bolt. There you go. Click OK. Right click, click Add Layer Mask, set it to Grayscale Copy of Layer, and click Add. Select all on your layer, fill it in with the color blue, just like we've been doing all along. And then move it in position. So click on your layer group, move it up, and then you'll notice that it's, you know, it's going to arc kind of close to the center. So we're gonna, I want it to kind of arc a little crooked. So I'm going to actually click on the rotate tool, click on the layer group, and then click on the center point. And I can actually change where it's going to rotate about. I'm going to have it rotate about the center of the actual orb itself. And then just rotate it, pull it until I'm happy with where it goes. I kind of like that. So we'll go with that and click rotate and once it's done rotating, we can go ahead and finish the uh, the effect by getting rid of some of this extra stuff at the bottom of the loop. So just click on your layer mask, hit D on your keyboard to reset your colors back to black and white, and then just brush away this unwanted portion of the actual lightning. And leave a little bit on this side, but bring this one all the way up to the edge. Because what we're doing is we're creating the illusion that is coming from the back side of the lightning ball up and over into the front side. Now that you have that, just right click and click duplicate layer. Fill in the duplicated layer with the color white. And there you go. Now, the only thing is, is your lightning is going to look kind of weird on the end here. So you want to click on the blue layer mask and get rid of that blue on the edge by filling in the color black just so that it kind of looks like it's fading into the ball, not ending on top of it. And now we're just going to go ahead and do that same process again and create another another lightning ball, or I'm sorry, another lightning streak that goes in there into the actual ball. And this time I'm going to use a different gradient just so you can kind of see some of the different ways that you can create this lightning. So our different gradient is actually going to be the radial mode, but this time we're going to set it to triangular wave. And um, it'll, you'll see. So we're going to click, right click on our lightning ball group and click new layer group. Set it to lightning 2. Right click on it, add a new layer and click OK. Make sure your gradient is black and white, or your colors are black and white. Click on your gradient tool and then just create a um, gradient kind of like that. So start here in the middle and just try to keep it kind of small. There you go. So now you've got this nice symmetric shape there. So f with that we're going to go ahead and click repeat difference clouds and it will go through and create that effect. Okay so we, then we just click colors invert, colors levels, crank up our levels until we get 
our nice shaped bolt. Kind of like that. Click OK. And then fill in the rest of the unused parts with the color black. Because we're not going to use all of these rings, we're only going to use the one ring that closest fits the overall shape of our orb. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and get the lasso tool. I hit the F key on my keyboard, and then I'm just kind of going around selecting what I want to keep, and then clicking Emit Color, or I'm sorry, Select Invert, and then click on your bucket tool right here, and fill in everything else with the color black. So that gets rid of everything else. Now right click, click Add Layer Mask, set it to Grayscale, Copy of Layer, and click Add. Select All, and fill the selection with the color blue. And now we have our second ring that we're going to use on this image. Of course it's quite a bit um, lar larger than it should be, but that's okay, we can work with it. Um, it's kind of the reason why I did the single radius on the other one, just because it's a little bit easier to control. This is kind of unpredictable. You don't really know how big your radius is going to come out. So I'm just going to click on the scale tool here, and I'm just scaling it down to, to a more reasonable size. Um, I don't really like that because it kind of looks like bunny ears. So maybe, maybe that. That looks, well, it's all symmetrical. There we go, right there. So you click scale, and then now you're just going to click on your layer and get rid of all this extra stuff that we don't want by brushing in the color black on the actual layer. And again, you're going right on the edge on this side, and then this is going to come up and go into the actual ball a little bit. Right click on the layer and duplicate it, and we're going to create our actual white. So just create a new layer and fill in the duplicated layer with the color white, just like we've been doing all along. And then get your layer mask out color and black on the blue layer so it kind of fades back into the image. And there we go. So that sums up how the lightning is um, is made. So from there we're going to go ahead and start creating all of the effects that really generate and create the mood on this image. Okay, to create that mood, moody blue color and the, the really sharp contrast that I created in this image, I used a series of two layers, and that's what we're going to create next. So first, just right click on a layer and click New Layer, and name this layer Blue Mood, and then move it to the top. Fill that layer in with a color blue. Specifically, the color I used was this HTML notation here, 004F9E. If you type that in to this box here, it'll give you the exact same color I used. So click OK. Now click on the bucket fill tool, which is over here, or hit shift B, and fill that entire layer with that blue color. And then set the layer mode to overlay, and there you go. That's the first step in creating this moody effect. Now to create the extra contrast, we're going to create a, a all black layer that's going to make a lot of this stuff darker. So right click and again click new layer, and name this one um, contrast and then fill it in with the color black and set its layer mode to overlay as well and with that you now have as you can see in a quick comparison the uh, the contrast that this one has and then last but not least we're going to add one more layer because the problem is is you know this this blue mood layer added a lot of the bluish color to it but it, it really didn't change some of it as well as I had hoped it would. So to fix that, we're going to actually remove some of the color from this image. So just right click and click New Layer again and name this one Color. And make sure it's underneath both the Blue Mood and the Contrast layers. Fill it in with the color black and set its layer mode to Color. And then pull its opacity back just, just a little bit. Um, let me check and make sure I'm giving you guys the right information here. Yeah, I actually pulled mine back to about 50%. So right about there. As you can see now, 
it, it looks a lot more blue. Here it is, here's what it looked like without that color layer, and here's what it looks like with it. So it, it still looks, you can still tell there's color in it, but it's a lot stronger. Of it. it really strengthens the blue mood effect. So next up, we're going to focus on pulling some of the, the data back in this image. You know, like a lot of her cloak was lost whenever we added this contrast layer here. And there's some information that we want to keep there. So if you look back over at our original, a lot of this is still quite bright. So we're going we're gonna to work on adding all of that back into it. All right, so to do that, all we have to do is actually, if you look at our finished one, um, right here is that contrast layer that we had just created here. And all I actually did was, if you right click and you click show layer mask, I actually added a layer mask. And with my Wacom tablet, I actually dictated different parts of the image to be um, not quite so um, dark, I guess. It, it kind of equalizes it a little bit. And um, I'll show you how I did that. All I did was I right clicked on this layer and I clicked add layer mask and then set it to black, f or I'm sorry, white full opacity and click add. Alright, so at this point it didn't have any effect on the actual image. All it did was just add our layer mask. And then I'm using a Wacom tablet which helps me tremendously with this. Um, if you don't have one, I highly recommend that you get one. And um, I actually have a blog post that I already wrote that's kind of a little buyer's guide for people so everybody can have an idea as to uh, what the different types are and what the different benefits are of each one and um, you can go from there. Um, if you're curious, I actually just have a basic, um, the basic Wacom tablet. Um, it's enough for me. It does what I need it to do and it does it quite well. So, you know, and it's, I think it's seven, under $75 to get it. So it's not bad. Anyway, back on topic. Um, the reason why this is so convenient is because if you right click on this and you click show layer mask and I start brushing, You'll notice that as if I push hard, it makes it fully black. But if I push light, it kind of makes it less dark. And what that does on my layer mask is it creates different amounts of intensities of light. So I can use that to my advantage for to essentially shade the the uh, highlights back into this image by just using a soft brush and just kind of coming through and brushing in the color black where I think there needs to be highlight. And you just kind of go through and go like that. And you'll notice yeah, I'm essentially just painting the highlight back into the color, back into the image. I'm actually not painting the highlight, I'm just removing the uh, the darkness that the, the overlay layer has created. And I'm just kind of cutting a color pretty much everything first and then remove it as I see fit. And you gotta remember now the lighting on this image has got to be a little bit different than it was before because originally it was um, intended to be you know without that lightning ball over there on the right side but that lightning ball is creating a lot of light so it's really gonna have a pretty strong effect on just how bright this image is is overall you know so you gotta keep that in mind and account for that so and then once you have everything highlighted just kinda go back switch over to the color white on your layer mask and then just remove some areas where you don't think it's necessarily gonna flash so bright so you know like right in here is probably not gonna really hit that hard and then maybe just brush it back just a little bit. And I'm just hitting the X key on my keyboard to switch between the colors black and white on my layer mask. If you're coloring in the color white, it's going to get rid of the highlight. If you're coloring in the color black, it's going to re-add it. So, you know, it's going to kind of do that. And then, something else I like to work with is the smudge tool. So if you hit S on your keyboard, it'll bring up the smudge tool and you can just kind of smudge in areas for highlighting and stuff like that. And this is a really, really great tool for um, for just shading in general, really. Just because it, all it's doing is it just grabs pixels and it just kind of pulls them. 
So, you know, it it's just really good. Try messing, just mess with it some time and really work with it and see see how it can help you. Okay, so that's a pretty good starting point. Um, for now, I'm just going to focus on the cloak. Later on, we're going to actually add some lighting to the arm to actually make it look like the lighting is making the arm brighter in the areas where the lightning actually is. Um, so next up, if you look over at our original image, you can see that I also have a white layer set to the layer mode overlay. And we're going to essentially do the same thing. So if you right click on this layer and click duplicate layer, and the reason why we're duplicating it is because we want the same exact layer mask on this one that we had on this one. And we're just going to fill it in with the color white this time. And what's going to happen is it's going to make all of the areas that we just told the image to um, make darker get lighter again which is the exact opposite of what we want because what we're trying to do is we're trying to take the parts that we said um, in our contrast layer you know the parts that we said don't make this part dark leave it light we're trying to tell this part this layer here we're trying to say you know make these parts lighter so we're essentially trying to we want the same exact pixels to be lighter on this layer as what ones we told to not be dark on this layer. It's kind of hard to word it right, but essentially all you need to do is duplicate the layer and click colors invert on the layer mask and it will just further enhance how light the um, the actual outfit itself is. And that will really help pull out a lot of that, that detail. So then from there we can go ahead and probably start working on the eyes or alternatively we can also just start yeah let's, let's start working on the face a little bit so if you zoom in on the face I want to make it a little bit brighter to kind of give it the illusion that you know that lightning is hitting it pretty hard so we're going to kind of just run through and stroke on there a little bit and then switch over to our contrast layer and tell it to brighten up a little If you zoom out, see that's, of course, that's way too bright, but that's okay. So let's just go back to our brighten layer and pull some of it back a little bit. And I'm just kind of creating some even strokes on my layer, layer mask with my Wacom tablet. There we go. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the arm, too. Um, just kind of zoom in, click on your paintbrush, and just kind of brush. First off, go to the contrast layer and brush the color black where the lightning kind of goes along the arm. You know, and brush extra hard in the areas where the uh, lightning is especially visible because you're wanting it to, you know, really, really pop out. And if you brush hard, it'll make it extra, extra bright. And then pretty much the whole hand needs to be bright because the um, obviously the lightning is hitting it. But now here's something that's interesting. What you want to do is you want to try to get the front half of the hand, not the back half. So right here along this edge, try to keep that dark so that it looks like it's being lit by the ball. Just kind of click, make your brush a little smaller, fill in that area, just kind of repeat that process in between all of the different areas of the actual uh, lightning itself. You don't want to actually brush the lightning because you don't want the lightning to be brighter. It doesn't need to be. There you go. Now if you zoom out, you have a pretty convincing look there this could probably soften up a little bit. So to fix that we're going to use the smudge tool I think. And a lot of the highlighting process is pretty much just kind of you know fine-tuning and tweaking and um, it, it's just again just like I said earlier with the lightning you spend a lot of the time just looking at it going ah I, I don't like that I, I like that her hairline you know it, it's not even here and you know like for example 
I would just take the smudge tool and I tweaked that a little bit to kind of make it look a little more uneven and you know it's just it's stuff like that that makes the biggest difference so you know just really take your time and just kind of look at what you think would really make this image look over the top and again coming back to to this finger here like I said it just looks a little bit too sharp so we're just going to kind of use the smudge tool and just kind of soften up that edge a little bit just to kind of make it look a little more realistic you know same with this finger just kind of, and we're going to do the same thing onto this layer. Just kind of smudge some of that. Oh shoot, we haven't even started painting this with the white layer. Let's see what that does. That might actually make it too bright. If it does, we can just undo all of this. Yeah, I think it's going to wash it clean out. Yeah, I don't think I like that. So let's undo all of that. And then click on our paintbrush again. And just kind of go through here on the white layer. And just kind of really add some of this color throughout here. And you know what, we'll just go ahead and add that. And I'm just going to make this, this white layer globally um, less visible. I'm going to turn the opacity down on a little bit just to kind of make it less intense overall because pretty much everywhere I've gone it's been too much. So let's just turn it back a little bit and there we go. That looks a little better. So yeah. Now one thing, next up we're going to start working on the eyes and the eyes are kind of, you know, the first and most important thing is if you look at this image the eyes are really, really bright. I mean, I, and they look crazy. I mean, if you zoom in just a little bit on just like one eye, and then you compare it to this eye, I mean, there's a huge difference there. And that's what really makes, in my opinion, that's what really makes this image stick out. Is is always it's always the eyes. It's always, I mean, that's just so important. Um. So we're going to work on that next. All right, so to do the eyes, the first thing we want to do is we're going to right click and we're going to click new layer and we're going to name this layer um eye lighten. Lighten, eh? lighten. There we go. And um we're going to actually use this to lighten up the eyes overall. But before we do that, I'm going to actually click on my contrast layer and uh make sure that it's not affecting the eyes because you don't want to darken something and then turn around and lighten it again later it's just it's bad practice and the reason why it's bad practice is because you're telling GIMP to process the same pixels twice in opposing directions and it, it'll it kills the quality of your image so you want to make sure that you know you're only processing what you have to process now that we've done that we'll go ahead and use the eye lighten layer and the reason why we're actually and you'll notice that I'm going to fill this layer with the color white and set it to the layer mode overlay which is exactly what I did with my um, this layer here but the thing is is this layer has its own opacity settings I want the eye lighten layers opacity to be independent of this one and I don't want to have to fiddle around with having to constantly paint different opacities in manually. It's much easier to just have this on its own layer so I can just easily control that eyes, the eyes brightness individually. And you'll see what I mean. So let's add a layer mask and set it to black full transparency and click add. So now that effectively removed our um, second overlay layer that we added. And then we're just going to go back with the color white and we're just going to fill in the eye as a whole because we're, we're actually going to lighten the entire eye first and then focus in on the iris later. So first up, we'll just do that. And then we're going to zoom all the way out and then we're just going to adjust the opacity of this layer until it looks okay. That's pretty good. It's at least a good starting point. And next up, from there, if you look back over, you'll see 
that the eyes are actually made up of a series of several <laughs> several layers. Let's hide these real quick. So first off, you've got the layer that whitens the eye as a whole, which is the one we just made. And then you've got this layer here, which creates this crazy um, star-like a look. And you have a third one that brightens up the stars themselves even further. Um, another layer that is... What is that one doing? It's taking too long. There it goes. Oh, this one's actually lightening the other eye because I actually lighten up each eye individually because they're they need different settings. See? So yeah. Okay. And then also something else to note, there's actually a layer hidden in my layer listing that actually darkens yeah, it creates these dark rings around the eye and they actually add a lot of depth too. Um I actually have an in-depth tutorial just on um, working on eyes, and I highly recommend that if you haven't already watched it, that you watch it uh, now, because it's really useful. I'm pretty much going to go over the same information in this tutorial, but it's still nice to watch it. So, the first thing that we want to do is we want to start creating the, uh, the, the brightness on the actual iris itself. So to do that, we're just going to actually right click on our layer and click new layer. I just had to I had to check and make sure I was thinking right. Um, and then click on the bucket fill tool and fill it in with the color white and set it to overlay. And again, this is another one of those times where we're kind of we're we're making this a different layer even though we're doing the same exact thing just simply because we want to um, keep the opacity bars independent of one another and then just set it to black full transparency and click add. Click on your paintbrush tool, switch over to the color white, and then just kind of color in the iris. And then switch over to the color black and get rid of the color from the pupil. And then the outer edge, just make sure you kind of get rid of, you don't want too much color in that center there or the edge. And then zoom out. And you'll notice that that one eye on the on the right is quite a bit brighter than the one on the left. And we're just going to do the same exact thing with a left eye. But first let's let's just finish up this eye all together and then we'll go from there. So now we're going to right click and add another new layer. And again, we're going to fill it in with the color white and set it to the layer mode overlay. And I'm going to close this because I'm starting to get a lot of layers, so it's starting to bog down the computer a bit. Okay, so now just right click and add a layer mask. And this time we're going to add that crazy star look into the eye that really, really makes them pop out. And to do that, it's all in the layer mask. So just right click and click add layer mask, set it to black full transparency, and click add. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually create this the right pattern that will actually create streaks inside of the eye and if you've already watched the uh, eye making tutorial that I linked below you probably already know what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna cl click on the lasso tool here or the, <laughs> the free select tool and then I'm just going to click filters noise um, RGB noise and then crank that up click OK and then hover over the center of the pupil and down here you'll see there's a set of coordinates and you're going to take note of those numbers because we're going to need that in a minute so if you click blur motion blur and set it to zoom and you crank up the length a little bit and then you hover over this it says 2878 by 750 so if you set the X at 2878 and then 750 it's going to put the center of the pupil as the center point for this blur. Then you click OK and it creates that that blur that we want. The problem is, is it's not strong enough of an effect so we click colors, levels, and we're going to crank those levels up or actually down and up until we get 
that really, really crazy high contrast between the two, and then click OK. And then just get rid of the extra stuff around the outer edge by clicking on our paintbrush tool, coloring in the color black around the outer edge. And again, short brush strokes is always the way to go. Just remove all that. And then again, in the center of the pupil, click a couple times to get rid of it in the middle. And there you go, just like that, you've got that really crazy eye look. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and add a darken layer around the outer edge. All right, so next up, we're just gonna go ahead and right click and click new layer and fill it in with the color black. Oh, make sure you select none first and then fill it in with the color black. Set its layer mode to overlay and then again, right click on it and click add layer mask. And this is just gonna be the black ring along the outside, so get your tablet out and just kind of brush the color white on your mask right around that outer edge you zoom out that actually makes a pretty substantial difference in itself and then all we're gonna do is you're just gonna go over to your other eye and you're just gonna essentially do the exact same steps I just did with this eye and um, from there, just fine tune everything, you know, tweak all the lighting until you're really happy with how it looks. And uh, that's pretty much it. So one last time, I'm going to open up the final result that I originally did, which, you know, was much more polished than this one I showed you in the tutorial. Um, you'll notice that I kind of tweaked the color on it and a couple other things. So yeah, that's... That's it, there's your after, and there's your original. So I hope this tutorial helped. Um, if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help, and thank you for uh, being a member of GIMPT Premium. Have a good one.